Greetings! I am Herbert Erbaderp, and once again, Wednesday has returned. And with it, ask a Herbert Erbaderp, which is this. I noticed the other day that I passed 5,000 subscribers. In fact, I am now up to 5,170. It was more like 5,150 when I wrote the script. I think that's amazing. And it really snuck up on me, which is why I had nothing special prepared to celebrate. So I suppose this will have to do. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. It still kind of surprises me that that number keeps going up. Not that I'm complaining, it makes me feel pretty good, so thank you all. Moving on to the questions. Lieutenant Colonel John Frost said, Would you ever consider doing some of the LDGR in 28mm? I'm not sure what LDGR is, so I'm going to assume that you mean LRDG, Long Range Desert Group. I did consider it when I was building the Rubicon Jeep a while ago, and I still might. I'm definitely considering doing some desert models, if not specifically LRDG stuff. The plan is my two Crusaders at least will be painted in a desert scheme, and almost definitely some infantry to go with them. But that's more of a long term plan really. I guess LRDG stuff might fit in with those in some way, so it's entirely possible. Punky Ryan said, Will you paint soon the M10 Ursatz Panther? I would like to see that. I don't have any immediate plans to paint it. In fact, I'd kind of forgotten about that model altogether. It will get painted eventually, but out of curiosity, how much interest is there in seeing the War Crime Panther being painted? I have four painting projects at the moment in various stages of completion, but if it's something people really, really want to see, I'd be willing to paint it a bit sooner. Let me know in the comment section below if you would like to see me painting the M10 Ersatz Panther, which is a resin and metal Flames of War miniature. Ratto said, Colors of War book tells us that, however, like everything in the Soviet army, anything is possible. Do you agree? I'm not really sure of the context, but sure, I think anything is possible. I think this is probably in relation to paint shades, and anything is certainly possible with Soviet tanks, including no paint at all. But also, in all things, anything is possible. Why not? Chop said, Can you make a KV-2 turret haiku? Yes, I can make a KV-2 turret haiku. It's not very good. Let's try that again. KV-2 turret can be put on all the things. To gulag with you. I'm bad at haiku. PKBC has, or PKB Chaz, says, Have you ever heard of the mini war game Dust Tactics? I have. I recall hearing or reading that it had been discontinued. At a glance, it seems to be pretty similar to games like Conflict 47. Weird World War II stuff appeals to me, though I've never played any of the games. And I don't have any of the models. Not yet, anyway. Zeljako said, How would I go about painting rubber tank tracks with a glossy type varnish over them? I'm not sure if you mean they already have a glossy varnish, or if you want to apply a gloss varnish to them. I haven't actually painted rubber tracks for a while, but I would just prime them as usual and paint them as usual. I might apply a little bit more protective varnish than I usually would though. I think the trick is really to prevent them from bending or flexing too much, because that will cause the paint to come flaking off. That's probably not super helpful, sorry. Jihad Teppo said, Could you include painting in your unboxing videos so I don't have to wait five years for a painting video? I don't do unboxing videos. They're more assembly videos or perhaps reviews. Just to be pedantic. I should probably make an FAQ or something. But the reason I don't paint models in the same video that I build them is because I'm a very slow painter at the best of times. That's how I work best, slowly and deliberately. Also, it takes a lot more time than you might think to make the videos I do make. I really like doing a modelling related video every week. And frequent videos is good for the channel. They do take a significant chunk of time to make. While I'm building the model, I also have to film it and make sure everything is in shot and focused and things like that, while taking notes at the same time. Then it takes more time to write up a script, record it, and then edit the video. That's usually easily done in a week. Adding painting would add a great deal more time required. I'm sure I could do a half-assed rush job and get the model painted in a week, but it would look like garbage and I wouldn't be happy with it. And I don't think it would be worth watching. Really, who wants to see a half-assed paint job that's been rushed to meet an arbitrary deadline? Probably not many people. I don't. 
It also takes a fair bit of time to do Ask a Herp a Derp a Derp, any gaming videos I make, any other voiceover work that I have, or any streams I want to do. And as much as I enjoy doing those things, sometimes I just want to do things that aren't sitting at my computer staring at Premiere or working on models. It's a good idea to try and have some kind of a social life. Some people in Discord suggested that I don't like painting or I think it's boring, but that's not the case at all. I really enjoy painting, it's quite relaxing. That said, it can be hard to find the time for it. I mean, I don't really like starting a step in painting only to have to stop before it's finished, especially if it involves mixing colours, if that makes sense. So for example, if I only have 10 minutes, I'm probably not going to start painting. I'll do something else. Also, I don't want to spend every moment painting. Just because you love something doesn't mean you can or should do it every waking moment. Maybe you're different, but I would grow to resent and not enjoy it. If I were to force myself to paint every spare moment, it would quickly go from enjoyable hobby to miserable job. I would be destroying my hobby, which I love, for very, very little gain. Maybe you just haven't considered the time it takes to make the videos. Maybe you just don't care. I get the feeling that a lot of people who complain about the time it takes me to get painting videos done are young and have a lot of spare time and very few responsibilities and obligations. Bottom line is, I'm a person, not a video making robot, and I have to find a balance in life between making videos, maintaining friendships and supporting myself. It's taken me a lot of time to learn that self care is important and I'm really not interested in burning myself out again. My plan for this year is to do a painting video at least once a month. If that's not enough, deal with it. Ratto said, You seem to prefer airbrush primers over rattle can. Why is that and what are the pros and cons? I definitely do. With an airbrush you get much more control over the paint and that's pretty important to me. With a rattle can, the only control you really get is the distance at which you spray the model. Not only that, but an airbrush works out to be cheaper in the long run. Buying rattle cans can add up quickly. Sure, the outlay for an airbrush and compressor is a big expense and not everybody can justify that. That's fair. But if you think about it, you probably plan to do the hobby for a long while. As an example, I had a big bottle of Vallejo Primer that lasted me a couple of years and I think cost $15 or maybe $20. And that's significantly cheaper than an equivalent amount of paint in rattle cans, even the cheap ones. When you factor in the fact that you can do base coats, weathering, clear coats, and whatever fancy airbrush things you want, the airbrush option becomes kind of cheap. It also saves a lot of time. Maybe not much time versus a rattle can for priming, but it's much faster than brush painting. Also, while I'm no paint doctor, I'm pretty sure the propellants in rattle cans are worse for the environment than plain old compressed air. Not really an organised list of pros and cons, but hopefully that's helpful. Selika said, What are your opinions on the Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast and Toowoomba? And which do you have a better opinion of? Hmm. I don't really go there a lot, but the Sunshine Coast is pretty nice. Last time I went there, my friend and I had an excellent day at Underwater World, which I think is now called Sea Life. In general, it just seems nice there. The Gold Coast, less so. The actual city area of the Gold Coast is pretty trashy, especially at night. The beach is nice, but too crowded. Also, the big theme parks are in the Gold Coast area. Not that I really go to them a lot, but there's attractions if that's your thing. Toowoomba I don't really know. I used to have relatives that lived there so we'd go there every now and then when I was little, but I've not had a reason to go there since I was 10 or 12 so I don't really know much about the place. I guess out of those three, I have the best opinion of the Sunshine Coast. Smose said, What made you wanting to get into bolt action? I can't remember. I think I was actually gifted a bolt action tank, which prompted me to get more. I think that gift was actually prompted by my mentioning that I thought the game looked interesting. Though I can't really remember. I do remember the order dice being a part of why I thought the game might be fun. Also, slightly bigger models than Flames of War had was appealing too. On last week's Ask a Herp a Derp a Derp, James Valentine said, Are there any rule sets or gaming systems you've really wanted to try but haven't for any reason? Perhaps other historical games like Napoleonics or Ancients? Maybe something from Osprey? Also, have you been seeing the stuff Rubicon has been teasing? It looks very exciting. I'm not really big on gaming systems and rule sets. At least not like some people are. It seems like a lot of people are really serious about tiny details in rules and get really invested, and I don't. Maybe it's got something to do with how little I actually manage to play, so I don't generally learn about them and get excited about them. 
I'm definitely much more of a modeler than a gamer. I have been curious about trying games like Battle Group or Chain of Command, but vague curiosity is about the most you could really expect from me. I don't really have a lot of interest in things like Ancients. They don't have tanks. And you've probably guessed that I like tanks and other big war machines. And yes, I've seen a lot of the stuff that Rubicon has been teasing and I'm so very excited for it. They've shown stuff like Pack 40s, Jagd Panthers, Flak Guns, Sherman Calliopes, Verbal Winds, T26s, and probably a lot of other really cool things that I've forgotten about. Rubicon are going to be taking a lot of my money in the near future, I think. Harry Robinson said, Do you necessarily need to fight a war game in its scale? For example, could you play Flames of War in 1 300th scale? Single player, of course. P.S. Sorry, I try to restrain myself, but I always put a comment on your videos. It becomes automatic after a while. Hey, I really don't mind comments. In fact, I quite like them. And engagement is obviously good when you look at channel statistics. So feel free to leave as many comments as you like. Yours have actually had a lot of good questions too, which I think are the best kind of comment. To answer your question, no, you can play war games in whatever scale you like. Also, you don't need to restrict yourself to single player to do so either. Of course, if you're going to be using different scales, you'll need to communicate that with any opponents and be sure they understand and have models in the same scale. You might also encounter some issues when measuring things like ranges and move distances and things like that, but you can always house rule in some changes to make your experience better. Again, just with communication with opponents. Obviously it's easier and you don't need to communicate if you play by yourself, but if you can agree with others there's no need to restrict yourself to playing solo if you don't want to. Speaking of games, Eddie Ingman said, When will you be playing some bolt action? I want to see a game. I don't know. I haven't really had the motivation to set up and play solo, and it's been challenging to get together with Barnaby for games. I don't go to gaming clubs and I don't especially want to go and play with randoms, especially not if I'm also going to be setting up cameras. But there will be something eventually. I'll also add links to both of the solo bolt action games that I've played on this channel so far, just in case you haven't seen them already. James Valentine has shared some of his photos, which will take us into the portion of Ask a Herpaderpada where I share modelling pictures from the community on Discord. James has shared these spaceships for Battlefleet Gothic, I believe. I'm not sure, but that's what they look like. These look really cool. I can't say I really know much about the game or the models, but I like them. He's also shared this Hellbrute, which he claims is tabletop standard. I would say it's a bit higher quality than that. This is some really awesome work. Next, Ratto has shared a bunch of his models. First, these half tracks, both anti air and regular, and some armoured cars for his North American forces in North Africa. These are Battlefront 1 100th scale models. There's also some mortar carriers. He also shared these very bright fellows, who are apparently off to a techno rave on a spaceship where I'm sure they'll have a blast. He's also shared this work in progress, a Sin Eater Observant for Infinity. I don't know much about Infinity, but I really like that green. Also, that bright purple is a great colour choice. Very nice. James and Ratto aren't the only ones posting stuff. Here's Duncanuva's Gundam, of some variety. It kind of looks like he's holding a pink lollipop. Boer Harms shared his 15mm scales of Vesda King Tiger, which has been nicely whitewashed and looks excellent. This tank looks like it's been putting in some work. The mouse is cool too. PKB Chaz, or however you say his name, shared this tank. Like others, I first took this to be an IS-3 of some variety, but it is in fact an IS-4B for the game Dust Tactics, and it looks really cool. There was also this Soviet Heavy Walker, also for Dust Tactics. I quite like the hand-painted markings. Looks very Soviet. I guess this is why you asked about Dust Tactics. Ethan Rowland correctly heard that I like KV-2s, and so shared this awesome diorama featuring the aforementioned sensible derp tank. This is some amazing work. Jihad Teppo shared this BF-109, which is really nicely done. And while I like somebody's suggestion of making a diorama of a Spitfire shooting it up, it would be a shame to ruin such nice work. Well, well, well. Smose shared his now complete Cromwell. It's very cromulent. 
You mentioned you might not be able to find much time for models, but I do hope you can find some. Even though it can be hard and other things are more important, I would like to see more of your work. Kringspier Musketeer shared the Spitfire, which is currently not spitting fire, which is probably good. The removed engine cowling and machine gun panels are a really cool detail, and the painting is delightful. And finally, some dude also has a Spitfire with removed panels, and he's added some extra wires and detailing in behind where those panels would be, which is really cool. Keep up the amazing work everybody, and thank you very much for sharing. And that's it for this week's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb. If you have any questions or comments you would like me to respond to, put them in the comment section below or on Discord. And feel free to share pictures of your models too. Also, if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media, and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon, where we have cookies. They might be fictitious cookies, but they're still… well, no, they don't have any flavour. Become a patron anyway, it's fun. Links to all of those things are in the description below. I shall return soon, so until then, keep being awesome and thanks for watching. Farewell.